When Japan cut off its relations with the Western world in 1633 there was a ban on all foreign playing cards, as they encouraged illegal gambling. Playing cards were extremely popular at the time, mainly because of the gambling so it was long before the Japanese started creating their own homegrown card games. The first of these were designed for a game called Ansun Karu, but eventually, the game was also used as a form of gambling, so the government banned them as well. A volley of new card games, followed by subsequent government bans, went back and forth over the next century. Finally, in the 19th century a new card game, Hanafuda, was invented. It used images instead of numbers, so it couldn't be used for gambling. The government relaxed its laws on playing cards and allowed sales of the Hanafuda cards. Unfortunately, the constant bans and the lack of gambling took their toll and the new card game received a lackluster response until a young entrepreneur, Fusajiro Yamachi, came on the scene. In 1889, a 29-year-old Fusajiro Yamachi opened the doors to his company Nintendo Kapai, which manufactured Hanafuda cards made up of paintings on cards from the bark of a mulberry tree. Fusajiro sold the cards at two Nintendo Kapai stores. The quality of the art and design brought Hanafuda enormous popularity and established Nintendo as the top game company in Japan. Over the next 40 years, Nintendo Kapai remained the top card company in Japan under Fusajiro Yamachi's tutelage. It continued adding the most popular games as well as inventing several of its own. Fusajiro retired at the age of 70 and his adopted son-in-law, Sekiro Kendo, who changed his name to Sekiro Yamachi, took over the business in 1929. After continuing to run the company, Sekiro sought to expand and establish a joint venture, renaming the company Yamachi Nintendo and Company in 1933 and forming a card game distributor called Marufuku Company. Limited, these two companies continued to grow the business into a corporate giant. After running the company for 20 years, Sekiro suffered a stroke in 1949, forcing him to retire. Sekiro called his grandson, Hiroshi Yamachi, and asked him to take over the family business. Becoming the new president of Yamachi Nintendo and Company was a tumultuous time for Hiroshi, who had to drop out of law school at the age of 21 to take over the family business. His lack of experience caused resentment among the Nintendo employees. Followed by a factory strike, Hiroshi shocked everyone by firing everyone who crossed him and establishing new policies requiring all potential products and ventures to first be cleared by him alone. He changed the name of the company to Nintendo Karuta, then again to Nintendo Company Limited. Amazingly, Hiroshi's first several ventures were wildly successful. They included reintroducing Western playing cards, striking a card licensing deal with Disney and taking the company public on the Japanese stock market. Eventually, Hiroshi decided to expand the company into non-game-related markets, including a taxi service, hotels, and even the food industry, all of which failed. This combined with a crash in the game card market caused a nosedive for Nintendo profits. Without a major reinvention of the company, Nintendo risked bankruptcy. On a visit to the dying Nintendo card game manufacturing assembly line, Hiroshi noticed a low-level maintenance engineer named Gunpei Yaku playing with an extending arm he designed and built. Hiroshi was amazed by the extending arm and quickly ordered it into mass production, calling it the Eurotora Hando or Ultra Hand. The Ultra Hand was an instant success, and the decision was made to transition Nintendo into a toy manufacturer. Yaku was moved from maintenance into the head of games and setup, which oversaw product development. Yaku and Hiroshi's partnership reignited Nintendo making it once again an industry giant. Hiroshi became the richest man in Japan. Later that year, they formed a joint venture with Sony and developed electronic games, the first being the Nintendo Beam Gun game. During the 70s, Nintendo started developing their own home consoles, and in 1977, they launched the Color TV game line of home consoles starting with Color TV Game 6. Developed with a small limited run, the system showed signs of promise, and in 1978, Nintendo followed it up with the Color TV Game 15. Another dedicated console, also in 1977, a newly graduated art student, Shijiro Miyamoto, was hired as a staff artist for Nintendo's planning department thanks to his father's friendship with Hiroshi Yamachi. Miyamoto was soon mentored by Gunpei Yakoi and eventually became one of the most important players in the video game industry, creating some of Nintendo's most popular properties and hailed as the father of modern video games. Desperate to prove his talents for game design, Miyamoto was given the assignment to develop a game using the radar scope engine and tech that could easily be converted from the overstock units with little additional cost. With an extremely small budget, Miyamoto created Donkey Kong. The units were quickly switched over to Kong and it became an instant, historic success. This made Miyamoto into Nintendo's top game producer and the dominant force in the video game industry.
After spotting a businessman messing around with a calculator to entertain himself on a commuter train, Yaku was inspired to use that same calculator technology to invent a line of handheld video games that became known as the Nintendo Game & Watch. This would eventually help to develop the Game Boy as well. The Game & Watch was a hit and soon numerous toy companies were releasing their own LCD handheld games. Over the years they released many successful games and consoles including the Game Boy Advance, Famicom, NES and SNES. In 1996, Nintendo launched the N64. Although the N64 cartridges were far more costly than CD-ROM discs, the loading times were dramatically reduced, as the cartridges were capable of delivering the information almost instantly. This required the system to move the laser reader around to locate and slowly load the game information. The N64 was also the first home console in Nintendo's line to feature an analog or thumbstick on its controller. The N64's release was a bit of an odd one. While it sold extremely well in North America, with 500,000 units in its first four months, it was the first Nintendo console to get a cold reception in Japan. Although the N64 exceeded Sega's disc-based console, the Sega Saturn, Sony, had released its own video game system, the Sony PlayStation, with lower manufacturing costs, a lower price tag, and a larger library of games. The PS1 outsold the N64 by less than 10 million units, making it that console generation's winner by a nose. For the first time in the company's history, Nintendo's console dropped to hash 2. Then Nintendo launched the Virtual Boy which didn't do well at all and had underwhelming sales. The failure of the Virtual Boy drove a wedge between Yakoi and Nintendo president Hiroshi Yamachi, as both blamed the other for the system tanking. Yakoi stayed with Nintendo through 1996 to see the launch of the Game Boy Pocket a smaller version of Yakui's Game Boy system. Once the Game Boy Pocket was completed, the man once considered the Thomas Edison of video games severed his 30-year relationship with Nintendo. Over the years, Nintendo helped develop Pokemon, which was phenomenally successful. It spawned successful card games, video games, animated series, and even feature films. They also developed the Dreamcast and GameCube, which served as competition to the Sony PlayStation and Microsoft Xbox. On May 31, 2002, after 53 years running Nintendo and steering it to the forefront of the gaming industry, Hiroshi Yamachi retired from his position as president and became chairman of the Nintendo Board of Directors. His successor, Senoru Iwata, head of Nintendo's corporate planning division, was named as his successor and became the first Nintendo president outside of the Yamachi family. Nintendo would then go to release such innovative consoles like the Nintendo DS, Wii and Switch which would cement its place as one of the best video games companies in history.